How to make money as an artist. I'm not starving at all. How to make money as an artist. Part 1. The mindset. Starving artists is a myth that stays true as long as we believe it. If we believe we are not worth a penny, why would anyone pay us for what we do? In a later video, I will talk about exact jobs that you can do to earn money, but on this video, I need to get our mindset first right. On a right radar. In this video, I want to twist your mindset around money and being a professional artist. This video is actually dedicated to myself five years ago, ten years ago, when I already had skills, but I was a hobbyist because I didn't think my skills were worth anything. Since I value your time, I'm going to put the time codes to the description. I hope I'm able to offer you new ways to look at art and how to make it as a profitable career. First, myth of the starving artist. There's this weird aura of admiration for the starving artist. Like the art would be more real if the artist didn't make any money out of it. Hearing this statement makes me sad. Why would it lessen the art to make living with it? Why is it heroic for artists to be poor? Does a painter paint better when she has nothing to eat or she doesn't have a roof over her head? I think not. If a person doesn't have the basic needs covered, like food and shelter and safety, it's really hard to be creative. Like there's just no energy for creating and doing. Money gives time and a safe place and ease to live and record, to communicate. The amount of somebody's bank account doesn't equal to the impact of their art, period. Be the boss, a good boss. A lot of artists are waiting for someone else to take the charge of the money. For Walt Disney and Vincent van Gogh, it was their brother. But I don't think you should wait for your brother or anyone else to take charge of the money. I think you should be your own producer, your own manager your own boss. No one else is as invested as you are in the art that you're making. So who else would be better at selling it or planning it? Of course, hire help when you need it. Uh, like no person is a mountain and we all need help. But don't rely on the help. Be the boss, not the rescue. To transform your art from being a hobbyist to professional, you need some entrepreneurial skills. If you like, you can divide those roles in your head. Like there's the artist side and then there's the entrepreneur side. The entrepreneur is a money dealing designer when the artist side is the gentle and fragile and creative and powerful crazy person. And the entrepreneur side of you will let the crazy artist side of you to have bread and butter on the table and live with the art she's creating. So you need both. And like any good boss, you need to remember that it's important to be hardworking, but it is as important to take care of yourself and enjoy life. Nutrition, sleep, exercise, social contacts, having fun, relax, Artists can be gentle creatures. You are a gentle creature. Take care of yourself. Be the dream boss for yourself and don't let yourself to be burned out. Love what you do and you will be paid for doing it. Have you heard the quote by Confucius? Choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. This is a statement that many self-made millionaires make. They're so passionate about their work, they don't even feel like they're working. The same could be applied a lot of artists. Because we choose the profession not from the promise of high salary, but out of passion. If self-made millionaires and artists are then making the same statement, why couldn't you be both at the same time? Make your job something that makes the time fly by. When you invest a lot of time in it without even noticing it, you become so good at it that people will pay for it. But eat your shit sandwich too. There's a great quote by Liz Gilbert, the author of Eat, Pray and Love, that is, which version of shit sandwich are you willing to eat? Or as Mark Manson puts it, everything sucks some of the time. The thing is that passion is a great starting point, but being an artist is not only about creating art. And even creating art, as much as you love it, 
can feel a job at times. If you choose to live as a freelance artist, you also need to learn entrepreneurial and housekeeping skills that make possible for you to do so. Artist life comes with freedom. You can sleep as long as you want in the morning and paint all night. But it also comes with uncertainty. Are you able to live stress-free without being certain where the salary will come next month? Have you prepared yourself for that? And there's whatever profession you choose, there's gonna be shitty days and shitty moments too. Being an artist is service occupation. Why do people pay for your art? People don't buy art just because they want to support you, or you family and friends will, but you need more than family and friends buying your art. So why do they buy it? What makes people to throw their money to our way? They did not spend their days at a job they either like or not to just give their money to us. In the essence, they trade their time to our time, their life to our life. They give us money when we can give them something. Like right now, are you watching this video to please me? I think not. You're watching this video because you think you might learn something, and I hope you do. What can you provide with your art that is a good trade-off with their time? What problem does your art solve? Does it touch people? Evoke emotions? Tell stories that has left untold? Teach? There is value in aesthetics alone, creating pieces that can lift the common day beyond ordinary. But there are so many other needs that art can solve as well. Find a place where you can help and the money and abundance will flow to you. Art is communication. One reason that art is valuable is that it is communication. We humans are very communal people. We have a strong need to be heard. We're so lucky as artists that we can express ourselves through our art. We can write diary with our paintings and patterns. But not all people can because they might not find the words or the paints or the time. They don't have interest to create the art pieces themselves. But what they can do, they can collect art. And they can express themselves through owning the art, through collecting it, through showing it. By doing so, they can feel understood. They can feel less alone. What a gift that is. Value of visuals. We live in a highly visual era. So it's weird that in this era, that every business needs visual material, we still occasionally think that creating appealing images wouldn't have monetary value. Great visuals draw attention. Get eyeballs. Gets attention. Gets customers. Sometimes, businesses just don't know it yet, so you need to show them. It's your time to make them see they need you. Fair payment. Every artist, and with artist I mean a person who is passionate about their craft, you don't need to have a degree, you just need to have put the hours in. They need to start valuing the service they provide. And with that I mean, ask for fair payment. Not just for your sake, but for the sake of all artists. Because as a community of artists, we choose the rates that we are paid. Maybe you can live without eating for a week, but would you ask that from your friend? Write down the next sentence and repeat it every night just before you go to sleep and first thing in the morning. I deserve to make a living as an artist. I deserve to make a living as an artist. I deserve to make a living as an artist. You really do. Be your own best friend and ask for a fair payment. Because sometimes it's easier to ask fair payment for your friend than it is for you. But think yourself as your best friend. People actually want to pay. There is no such thing as a free lunch, they say. If something is completely free, it sounds fishy. There's two places where you get coffee for free, in Finland at least. The first one is in the political rallies, and the other one sometimes in front of churches. What do they want from you in exchange from the coffee? They want to sway you, allure you, to get you on their side. To get you to vote for them, or to attend their services. For the coffee, they want you. Another example. There is a second hand shop very close where I live, that has a clothes rack outside the shop that says, take what you want, pay what you want. It makes me feel sorry for the clothing on the rack. Like they are not worth even notice if they're gone or not. So, 
with your art. Do you want people to feel sorry for you or for your art? Do you want to leave them thinking they owe you something because they got it for free or just cheaply? No, you don't. You make it easier for a collector or a buyer to make business with you if you're straightforward with your price. I recommend being as transparent as you can. If it's a design gig, for example, you should price it according to the time you think you will spend on it and be clear with your rates. Know what it costs for you to make. If something has a good, clear price, it's valued more than something that is just hanging there. Envy not. Bake your own cake. There's some negative money beliefs that hold us back. One of them is envy. That somebody being rich means that somebody needs to be poor. Envy about money is believing that the money of this world is one big cake. And we all share the same cake. Truth is that everybody has their own cake. They just need to bake it first. We have to do to get. They are printing more money to this world as we speak. Seeing an artist ahead of you enjoying his gorgeous big cake doesn't take anything from you. On the contrary, it's a good thing that he is an artist and he has been able to bake a great cake that can serve as a viewpoint for yourself. A. It's possible to bake a great cake with art as a career. What could you do to achieve the same? And B. He's sharing his cake with the fellow art community. He's buying art supplies for sure. He's making art investments maybe. He might have a gallery at some point. He might have art grants. He might teach. He's making the art world one cake more sweeter. What your neighbor has is not away from you, but it adds to the wealth of the whole street. And the same the other way. What you make is not away from anyone else. Unless you stole it, do not steal. It's okay for you to make money with something you love. Money is power. I want you to start valuing the money in a new light. Think about money as power or blessing. Now you choose where you want to give that power to. What do you want to bless? Every consumption choice comes with the consequences. When you buy from a local artisan, you give your blessing to a local entrepreneur. If you buy cheap top from a chain store, you give your power to maybe unethical and unecological way of producing clothes. Mass production is bad for this earth and we should stop giving so much power for it to it. When people invest in you, they give their power to you, their blessing to you. Respect that and be grateful of all the blessings you get. It's there for you to make more art. It's not just money, it's energy, it's trust. Remember to be responsible with it. Say it out loud and the world will listen. Use the free communication tools like social media. In Finland, we have a way of not boasting with our own achievements. We feel like people should already know what we've done, that their artwork or the books they should talk for themselves. I'm guilty of that myself. Until I heard one American say that that is actually kind of smug. Like, why do we assume that other people are so interested in us or the stuff we create if they haven't even heard from it? Like they should have made the research on their own. It's not as humble as we think. It's actually kind of Big-headed. If we've done something worth talking about, we should talk about it. It's polite to let people know what you're up to, both in internet and face-to-face. -face. You can post and you should post about something that is important to you at least three times. If it's a exhibition, happening, book, a product, let them know. If someone is simply not interested, he won't bother in reading your post anyway. But if somebody is interested, she might see the first post and be like, hey, this sounds interesting, but I'm quite in a hurry now. I don't have time to look more deeply into it. The second time she is like, I heard about this. This is really something that interests me, but now I gotta run. The third time, yes, I almost forgot this, but this sounds awesome. Thank you for reminding me. I'm glad I noticed it just in time. 
become familiar. Have you noticed that most of the people interviewed in magazines or TV are famous people? Well, why that is, is because they are kind of, they feel like our friends, because we already know them, we've heard about their lives before, so it's interesting to know if they've made something new, so every press is interested to post about them. But you don't need to become famous, but you need to become familiar. It's easier to buy from a familiar face, or a brand, or a place. Everything new and completely alien is a little scary at first. So you can become familiar by letting the world know what you are about and who are you. You can write social media posts and blog posts and press releases. You can make videos, you can show your face, but you don't really have to think about Shia. Think about brands that they don't have any face, but still we feel like we know them as a brand. No need to show your face if you're not comfortable sharing it. And also show the process behind everything you do, because that's interesting and that adds to the transparency of your art. It is hard at first to get your foot on the door, to get the first people the interest in you. But once you become more familiar, the easier it gets. But don't be spammy. You don't need to get everyone interested, you just need to find your tribe. And then your tribe will let you know what is valuable for them. You can learn from them. That's when you notice that your art is not about you so much, but it's about them. Let them be part of the journey. Fastest way to get money is to save money. This is a topic that I was writing so much about and this video is already so long that I decided I'm gonna skip this and put this on a, another video. Saving tips for artists, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to leave your comments and tips on making money and the mindset down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications too. I'm Ellie and this was Ellie's illustration. See you on the next one. Inspire and be inspired. If you want to see more videos, there's one here and one here and you can still subscribe to the channel by here. Yeah, I, I really had to write a script because there was so much to talk about. So if you see me with the script, it's just because I need to remember what I was supposed to say.